Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. I'm Dax Holt. Over there, however, is not Adam Glenn. That is Ryan Bailey. Buddy, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. What's up, Raw Dogs? What's going on? <laughs> I gotta tell you, I've, I've laughed so hard because we, we have tried to, we've said that name like, oh, uh, the fans of the show, Raw Dogs, and they're like, that is the last thing we want to be called. <laughs> Well, hey, if you're not going to use it, I'll use it for my show, and it doesn't make sense at all, but I, I love it. I think it's very good. Well, for any of you who uh, has not caught uh, Ryan on our show before, Ryan hosts the uh, So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey, which is an amazing podcast in the same genre, gets into all the entertainment, good gossip, uh, deep in the Bravo world, I must say. <laughs> you, you, you know all your stuff when it comes to anything that has to do with Bravo, um, and we've had him on our show show i've been on his show so uh thank you for filling in for adam today really appreciate it oh my god this is it's like christmas morning i love this i <laughs> i i leapt on this i anything to talk pop culture and especially with you uh listen we don't even need adam are you kidding me this is this is great as it is this is probably better. sorry adam oh that's so funny so all right let's uh let's read a quick review so we can jump into this get everyone caught up because it is friday this is our raw rundown episode where uh if you have missed any of the big entertainment stories of the week we will get you caught up in uh the next 45 minutes to an hour and let you know what uh what you can go into the weekend with all right so this review comes from Casey Face, binge worthy is the topic, and it says uh, five stars. Adam and Dax, I discovered you guys on Beyond the Blinds and quickly became hooked. Now I'm caught up and look forward to listening to your podcast as soon as it drops on my commute to work. Random, but can either of you tell me what Reba is like in person? Don't recall her being mentioned on your show, and I grew up watching her show with my grandma, so I've always wanted to meet her and wondered if you had the scoop. Thanks for creating fresh content. Love the podcast, and that comes from Casey in Cincinnati. Thanks, Casey. Uh, Reba, I have... I think I met her once very briefly, and she was wonderful. Um, I have... I have no bad stories, honestly, about Reba. Ryan, you, anything? Yeah, Casey, I hate to break that. Reba spit on me once. And... <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? I was just trying to think through my memory banks. Like, I've not heard a bad story about Reba mm -hmm. McIntyre. The only thing that comes close was that, like, isn't uh, uh, Kelly Clarkson's ex-husband isn't there a relation to Reba McIntyre in some way uh, of some sort? That's the only oh. thing that is even popping up. And that has nothing to do with Reba McIntyre. That has nothing. Yeah. It's just that Kelly Clark's that's the only thing. And that's not even to do with Reba. I, I just hear she's amazing. Yeah. I heard, I I've only heard wonderful things about her. And so I think she's one of those celebrities that lives up to the hype. But there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they, they, they look good on the outside or they have a good persona. And then you meet them off, off camera and they're horrible reba is that is not the case for her so um as far as i've heard no bad stories it's good to have people like that like it's good to have those people that are not like that that actually provide you with just a good overall feeling and nothing goes against that because it's the worst when a celebrity you know goes again and then you, your hearts i mean i remember having like a bad experience with Whoopi goldberg once and it broke my heart as a kid i was like what it just rocked my foundation and like made me so scared to ever approach a celebrity again isn't isn't it almost weird when you're like, wow, there's no bad things to say about someone because they're just a good person? Like, I feel like we don't get that these day and age. Like, there's always like, hey, this person's really funny, but a total dickhead. <laughs> you know, like there's always this, this a person's butt. bare. This person's really dark, really dark stuff yep. going on upstairs, but makes me laugh. You know, I love having people like that, and it's almost weird in this today's day and age. We're so conspiratorial. We're like, there's got to be something. There's yep. got to be some dark secret that Reba McIntyre is keeping from the audience. <laughs> 
<laughs> so true. So true. All right, let's jump into the rundown if you're ready for it, Brian. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, what do we got at number 10, Dax? Number 10, Jeremy Allen White agrees to daily alcohol testing. And this is all uh, to see his kids. And that this goes a part of this custody filing. You know, him and his estranged wife, Addison, they filed their custody, custody agreement. And some of the details have now come out and come to light. Uh, people I know obtained uh, some of the documents, and so they released a, a part of this. But basically, he now must test twice a week with a device on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, and, or, I'm sorry, twice, like, each time. So he, if he wants to see his kids, he has to blow into this, like, breathalyzer. It has a facial scan recognition, and it will Jeez. send the results to the other person. Um, <laughs> and, and this is also that he can have times with his daughters. and. Uh, It's pretty crazy, but I've never heard of something like this. Like, I didn't even know it was a thing, but I think this is a really good, uh, I don't know, tool to use if you don't necessarily trust someone, because this is your children. At the end of the day, you want your children to be in safe hands. If you feel like the other person uh, doesn't have their uh, alcohol under control, then here, prove it to me that you can be around our children. Um, and I did see some photos up on TMZ of him hanging out with his daughters on the beach. So I'm going to assume that he blew into this breathalyzer. It came back that he had nothing in his system and he is able to hang out with his kiddos. We need some of this technology for the housewives cast. To, <laughs> no, film. no, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, that's right. a terrible idea, right? No, what are you talking I mean, about? <laughs> listen, yeah, I mean, you got to do what you have to do to see your kids. And if he's willing yeah. to do that, I mean, that's what you got to do if it's going to make everybody feel safe involved. And listen, I'm just so, I, I just, I keep just seeing photos of him working out in the hills and doing like push-ups on streets. So, yeah, listen, I, I mean, uh, as long as everybody's happy, it seemed like it was a contentious divorce. And then recently we've seen more photos of them even hanging hanging out together with him and his ex. So I think, yeah, whatever's good for the kids. Yeah, a hundred percent. And like, and it seems like, you know, she hasn't shied away from saying, look, this is, it's not easy to be a single mother. It's not how I pictured it. You know, you're caught, you're on your own, you're dealing with the kids and even on your most stressed out day, you still have to be a parent at the end of the day by yourself. Uh, it does sound though, that they are getting along. Like you mentioned, we've seen them together. We've seen photos of them. They are co-parenting, um, but I like that she has stipulations. You know, yeah. it's, I think that is a a healthy way to do it. If if you don't if you don't have your alcohol under control, and I think a part of the also he has to go to some AA meetings as well. He has to be participating in AA meetings to continue having visitations with his daughters. And overall, that's just like a, a healthier lifestyle at this time in his career, especially as things are taking off so much with The Bear, you know, yep. that, that, which is an amazing show of like, you know, yeah, it's time to be completely on point on your game. I'm not sure what his issues with alcohol are, but like, yeah, I mean, all all this sounds kind of good for all parties involved. Yep. Agreed. Um, what do we have at number nine? Number nine, Mary Lou Retton, famous uh, Olympian, gymnast Olympian, uh, having some major health problems this week. Um, A lot of the entertainment world has been talking about this. She is battling a rare case of pneumonia. And uh, her family started up a spot fund account uh, launched by her daughter, McKenna. They were looking to get a goal of $50,000 to help her with all of her medical expenses. It has now ballooned. Uh, as of Thursday, when we are taping this, to over three hundred and sixty-three thousand dollars by over six thousand donors, um, her daughter went and released a video, just being so thankful for all the support. It means the world to them. You know, obviously, Mary Lou Retton was the the first woman, American woman, to win all around gold at the nineteen eighty four Olympics. Uh, she is fighting for her life right now, and um, a lot of people stepping in to to show their support and help her out. Yeah. I mean, what she represented in the eighties, especially on the covers of like, you know, she was on Wheaties boxes. I mean, she Mm -hmm. was the face of female Olympians and meant so much. And I like when we do rally around these pop culture figures and, you know, they shouldn't be forgotten. And especially if somebody like this needs help, you know, it's so nice to hear these stories where people are in a rush to help somebody that's made them feel good or meant so much to America and meant so much to Olympians. And I'm sure has inspired like some, you know, all of these ladies to do their best. So, you know, it's heartbreaking that she has to go through this, but what a great story of people wanting to help. 
She she was one of my first like starstruck Uh-oh. moments. I met her like a crush, I, like a like uh, crush. Not crush because she was obviously older than me, but it was like <laughs> one of those because I I'm from Colorado and we didn't have a lot of like celebrities roaming around. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I was a gymnast when I was younger, and Bart Connor and you know, Mary Lou Retton, like these were the biggest stars on the planet in my world. And they, I met them in Colorado at some like event and it was just like, Oh my God, it's Mary Lou Retton. This is wild. <laughs> you know? So um, <laughs> I definitely, and she was wonderful back then. Also, I like to point out that Dax said it could, he couldn't be in a relationship with Mary Lou Retton because she was older. So I just <laughs> want to let everybody know Dax really has something Sorry. against older women. <laughs> Sorry, Cher, you're out. Yeah. I know. Oh my God. Share. Come on. I, um, no, that's amazing. Uh, what do we have at number eight? Number eight, Denise Richards being slammed, absolutely slammed by fans, uh, because she was basically taunting a only fans collaboration with her daughter who is 19, um, basically saying, Hey, do you guys want to see more of this collaboration and it's a picture of her and her daughter together on, and you know she's not wearing she's wearing kind of like a see-through top kind of situation don't get me wrong both beautiful women however the the internet went wild and they were like condemning her just saying this is too freaking weird it's incestuous um people are not into it but I think that there is a weird group of people that would be really into this. Um, but, obviously, uh, <laughs> there's gonna, obviously there's a weird group, but you said it is weird. Obviously, there's, but I read somebody say it's only fams, not only fans, only fams now. Only and fams. And it's just families. I mean, listen, my parents like used to beg me to like just go to events with them anyways. And I said, no, imagine your mom wanting to, you know, wanting to do an only fans photo shoot. I, I love Denise Richards, but this is a bridge too far for me personally. I'm not trying to sex shame anybody uh, all mm-hmm. of this stuff but it's it's too weird and especially you know just for your mind to comprehend that to me it's just i'm just like ah it's i can't even i wouldn't even be able to know where to begin to enjoy that in any capacity and sammy i mean she's been pretty open she i, I don't think she reveals too much maybe uh you know she'll show her top but i don't think it's much more than that uh but it's still i just so weird just you know, hey where, let's take yeah, where does it end? off and pose together weird yeah, it's like it's like these aren't i mean like listen for all intents and purposes you can say this is like artistic and all of that stuff but there's like a huge contingent of people that love this for sexuality and sexual content mm-hmm. and i just think it's too it's too much and it listen she's going to be on real housewives of beverly hills again this season for multiple episodes and we already see erica jane in the trailer going did you know you can buy Denise Richards with seven Donnas on OnlyFans? <laughs> and, you know, it's just like, don't give people ammunition to come at you because I want to defend people like Denise Richards. And it's hard to do that when she's pulling daughters, like, you know, see a sexy photo shoot for $9. But, you know, what? on that same note, she's probably making bank because she says something crazy like this. Everyone talks about it. Now the world knows she has an OnlyFans. I mean, they kind of knew it before, but it it's in front of more people. I bet her OnlyFans is off the hook. She's probably making tons of cash off of it. No, I mean, you're completely right. That's really the society that we live in today. It does spur like, us talking about it. The PR, there's PR elements everywhere nowadays. So I just still think, though, it's at the end of the day, do you want to be hated or do you want to be loved? I still err on that side of, man, I would really want to be loved. I mean, mm-hmm. hated can like, you know, make you money, but it's still at the end of the day. I just, I find that hard to reconcile. And I'm so curious where she is in her mind and how she defends it. Yeah. It's weird. Weird, um, weird. Anyways, I feel bad that I bought it, but I bought, I mean, you know, right. I bought it. <laughs> I, once we started talking about it, I was like, I got to see what's doing here. So um, <laughs> what do we have at number seven? Number seven, Julia Fox. This is Kanye West's uh, one-time fling, who we, I felt like we were talking about so much about a year ago. Uh, she is releasing her new memoir called Dark Fantasy. Uh, uh, oh, 
talking about uh, down the drain is actually the name of it, but talking about the dark fantasy that uh, was in her life for for quite some time. Uh, Julia Fox opens up about her relationship with Kanye. Uh, it was only a two month relationship, but it felt so much longer because every day was something new about uh, about them. Uh, but she opens up a lot, saying that she actually met him uh, through like a friend. And he texted her and then it was just followed up by dozens and dozens of phone calls and that uh, he really started to kind of like come into her life, but like hardcore and fast. Like they, uh, they, she, he invited her to spend New Year's Eve in Miami, which he originally declined. And then he chartered a private jet for her and her friends. And so the, the two finally met face to face in the club and say, without saying a word, she said that he just kind of came up held her scanned her scanned the folds of her body and then began to kiss her neck and then it like i'm telling you you got you got to read the in full full story on this but basically after that they went out to the parking lot he started to pee on a wall where she jumped in front of him so that people couldn't take photos and then they started making out and then they went to like a home on star island and they were just dancing and hanging out there. And then the next day they went to Carbone in Miami and he was like, are we ready for this to go public? Next thing you know, photos come out in the media. And she goes, well, it felt like he planted that or released the photos himself, she said, uh, which I know he had a photographer that would follow him around. And uh, Adam was even there on one of those nights that they went to Carbone. And this photographer was taking all the pictures and then like literally leaving with Kanye. So clearly Kanye was manipulating a lot of the media with this. Anyway, a few days later, they go to another dinner in Carbone and she gets a text from one of her friends saying like, you need to go to the bathroom. And then when she got in the bathroom, there's racks and racks of clothing and it turned into like a montage of them trying on different outfits and snapping photos together. She's like, I just felt like a show monkey. I mean, this is a restaurant or, you know what I'm saying? Like this is in Carbone and she's saying that there's racks of clothing in there. It's so weird. Um, and then she said, well, I don't really feel comfortable. Like my breasts don't look big enough in this. And he goes, I'll get you a boob job if you want. Um, she just said that it like hanging out with him. It, he, she said it made me feel like, he was using me and it was in some weird twisted game. And she said, it just made me feel really dirty. And, and, you know, she, she would then, she flew to Paris with him. um, And it just, it started to feel really wrong to her. Like even at her like birthday, there was a bunch of Birkin bags that were sent to her and her friends. Apparently he made them like refilm a video of them opening the gifts and being so surprised and shocked. But saying that he was like orchestrating it from afar. No, I want your friends to look more surprised. Okay, I want them to lift up their hands when they get the Birkin bag. Okay, Julia, I want you to stand in the background and you need to just look over them and look like, uh, you know, you're really proud of the situation. Like he scripted everything that she was doing and then finally she was like, I I didn't want to be that puppet anymore. I didn't want to be anything more than just a publicity stunt for him. So anyway, uh, I bet this is actually a pretty fascinating memoir uh, just because she doesn't seem to hold back at all. She did not sign any NDAs, even though he wanted her to. Um, So she can kind of talk about it all. Well, I've never known Kanye to do something crazy. So this seems weird. (laughs) Uh, I don't know how much of this. No, I mean, listen, we've lived through this and even like certain things that were popping into my head. Like, do you remember that time they were out with Floyd Mayweather and Madonna and they were all on that couch kind of Mm -hmm. just like zoned out? It was like super weird. We had Kanye putting in like demon eye contacts and dressing her and it was you know, really kind of Julia was that middleman in between Kim Kardashian and Bianca Sensori, who is now, you know, wearing couch cushions and completely <laughs> on the other side of these things. But the yeah. only thing that I, I find it interesting in telling your own story, and I will be listening to this audiobook hands down, it sounds amazing. And I already put it on my list. But, you know, there was, you know, it, it, the PR and all of this stuff. And he was narrating this and he was directing this. This is mutual in a sense. She was able to use this two month relationship and give her 
uh, an extension on she was already a known person, already well known in the arts world. She was great in Uncut Gems. You know, a lot of people really love loved her already. But this extended her celebrity pop culture life. So in a lot of ways, she used this. I think to ride that wave, I'm not sure if she would argue that it is interesting to see the meal she makes out of this. And of course, it's a wild story. Anything involving Kanye is going to be completely bizarre because there are racks of clothing. She, He is fine. And like you said, they, they were kissing and stuff, but it was never a sexual relationship. They did not have sex. And I found that part fascinating as well. Uh, you know, really interesting what we read into it. But at the time, she's a smart enough woman to know what was happening in that moment. And now she's like, he weaponized me against Kim Kardashian. But you knew that at the time. We knew that as consumers at the time as well. So I find it interesting rewriting history. And I'm not standing up for Kanye because I really am not standing up for Kanye. And I really like Julia Fox. But it's interesting to hear somebody's perspective on something when I, you know, she knew what she was doing. I mean, she still would call the the paparazzi or you know tip people off i'm going to be out here wearing a shower curtain at this time come on out and i love that about her i love somebody having a good relationship with the paparazzi to say come get me with at a grocery store come get me like this i just think it's interesting to see how she's handled this and tried to take it to that next level and she's walking in a lot of major fashion shows i'm curious to see what the next thing is but the Kanye of it all is interesting. Like in no way did I think this was some like romance that was, you know, written in the the scrolls of time, but <laughs> she got, she got what she wanted out of it in a sense. And, you know, Kanye is on whatever, whatever this path he thinks he's on right now. It's, it's just interesting, but I will, I will read the, I will listen to this book happily. Oh, same, same, same. And I think you're right. They both used each other to the full extent. Cause you know what? If she wasn't with Kanye, we wouldn't be talking about it right now. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, what what would we talk about? Because I think she does have a fascinating life. She has a child. She has all of these things. But what we want to know is the Kanye of it all. These are the things like your show does so perfectly. It's like these things get picked up and we talk about it and we speculate on it. You know, and it's a weird kind of thing. It's not about happiness. It's about something being bizarre, something out of reach for us, something that we couldn't ever comprehend. And it's interesting. And I'm I'm so curious in her mind because she seems like a thought out person to a degree is what's next for her now? Like, what does she look for now? And when you do make money off press and who you are as a person, how do you plan for that in the long term? What are the goals from this point on? Yep. Agreed. Um. Anyways, shout out, Kanye. You're doing a great job, bud. Uh, <laughs> okay, what is number six? Uh, number six, uh, Cher gushing over her boyfriend, Alexander Edwards, also known as AE, uh, talking about his beautiful appearance in a new interview with People Magazine published on Wednesday. She said, you know, Alexander's got these diamond in his teeth and he's got tattoos and his white <laughs> hair and he's way younger. He's a beautiful man. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have been talking about this relationship. I Obviously, the age difference is what people love to talk about. She's 77. He's 37. Um, so once they started hooking up, it was like people were like, what are you doing together? You know, she said, listen, I, I think it's fun to be interested in someone else's love life. That is why people are talking about us. But uh, she she said, listen, I, 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 someone, a mutual friend of theirs gave him her phone number um, back in like the fall of 2022. And she said, I was really shocked because people don't normally just give out my phone number. I'm sure at the end of the day, you know. And, and by the way, he was a much younger man. So she was like, I don't think this is a good idea. And then suddenly it was like, oh, this actually is a really interesting relationship. They have really kind of fallen heads over heels in love with each other and they're enjoying their time. Whether this is going to be some kind of forever after relationship, I don't know. It seems like she's just saying, let's see where it goes. I'm having a good time. We're all, we just want to be happy at this point in, in life. So let's see where it goes. Well, let's see where it goes, but let's also make sure your bank account stays where it is. Let's make sure like these, <laughs> these diamonds in your teeth, like how did the diamonds in his teeth get there, Cher? Did you provide the beautiful diamonds in his teeth? Like, I want to make sure Cher is protected on all fronts. If this is true love- Cher's got love, so much money. 
She's got so we, much we, money. We, she, we can't just be giving this money away to a 27-year-old. Like, put, <laughs> put it in like a money mutual account or something. I just get nervous about the financial aspects of it all because it's not like this kid was probably going around like looking for cougars in his area. And that's what yeah. he was attracted to. He was attracted to because it's share and that power. I would love to see a documentary on this couple. That's what I want to see the day-to-day of how this works and not just quotes in an article and you know, press like events at a premiere. I want to see how they get along. What do they talk about? Mm-hmm. What What does he do? Do we know? I like, I don't even know much about this guy. I think he was like in the entertainment industry. I want to say that like Def Jam or something like that, but I really don't know much more about him. Like, yeah, he's a producer, producer a m- music producer, I believe, but I don't know to what degree and what success. But it definitely, I mean, like, once again, like, we're talking about him. So, like, I might do a cursory search after this and look into his career a little bit more. And I wonder how this helps his career or hurts his career and shares a beloved uh, pop culture figure. And I, I'm, I, I just don't want anybody to be taken advantage of in terms of that and especially how we view age in America. You know, obviously, it is a 50-year age difference. And there is a part of me that's like, this guy does not have good intentions. No matter well, what he's, you say, he's, Cher. He's he's 37. She's oh, 37. okay. Never mind, Are Dax. She, no, this is 37, perfect. Then. Never mind. This yeah. is perfect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> never mind. My bad. It's the perfect age, actually. No. Um, yeah. I, I Didn't they break up once already, though? Yes, they did break up and then got back together pretty quickly. These crazy kids are so passionate. That's amazing. Yeah. No, I... I don't know. It's like Cher's also had such an interesting run of boyfriends and romantic relationships over the years, like from Sonny Bono to Greg Allman to all, I mean, so many different pop culture things. So it's interesting. And if you compare the type of men, this is very left field for even Cher. So I'm curious what he, you know, like really is this, does this make her heart go flippity flop in a different way than any of these other men? I'm curious what love is like in your seventies as opposed to your sixties, fifties and forties. True. Better true. So, so true. So looking true. for different. I, th- I just think you're looking for different stuff at that point in your life. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe even you're going, oh, I want more excitement. I, who knows what it is, but there, there's got to be something that you want different now that you're established and you, you know, you, you, you've seen so much in your 77 years that you're like, oh, uh, th- I know what I'm looking for at this point in my life. He's looking for sleep, like a good night's rest. Like that would be amazing. <laughs> Like I'm, I'm much younger and I just want sleep. Like, my God. Um, uh, what do we have at five? Number five, Pete Davidson revealing he's got this really weird, but potentially lucrative collection. He was on the tonight show uh, and, and talking to Jimmy Fallon on Tuesday. And he said, look, you know, if acting and all that stuff doesn't work out, I've got something else that is going to set me up for retirement. And apparently it is, unpackaged VHS like tapes, like all of these old movies that are on VHS. He has started collecting them. They have to be unopened. That's like the big thing. (laughs) But, you know, VHSs were were done being made 20 years ago. And so he's saying, like, these become collector's items. People want them. People will pay big money for them at one point. I know that there was a a one that went Back to the Future was like $30,000 yeah. or something insane. Well, the Rocky one uh, I apparently sold for $53,000 at an auction recently. And so I think that that shows that there are value in these tapes. Um, I don't know, you know, you're not going to get $53,000 for each one of them, but there is a part where, you know, people never open these things and people buy weird stuff, dude, to collect for the rest of time. So it might do well for him. Oh, he's, I mean, God, I hate to, he's completely right. The market is there right now. It is the weirdest thing. I've watched like TikTok videos on this. It is uh, truly this collector's thing and people like, and the same thing with like, uh, like Steel Ray DVDs. Like people will go around like, oh my God, look what I found. I got a a Dogma uh, DVD that goes for like a thousand dollars. I mean, it's really this fat, but the fact that it's Pete Davidson adds another wrinkle to it all. Like, of course, Pete collects 
unopened VHSs. <laughs> and that, you know, that sounds like something you should really throw everything into uh, when you're not dating celebrities and doing stand up. I it just it's a, it seems like a very Pete Davidson idea. And I could see where it would excite him. But like, yeah. what roads does this lead Pete Davidson? Like, is he is he going in like backroom deals in Vegas to buy like unopened copies of Titanic? I, I think he's buying them online. I mean, apparently he's got somewhere between three and 5,000 of these VHSs at this point. He was just buying up everything that he could get his hands on. He said, I'm my own GameStop. <laughs> <laughs> when, when is the, like, and where does the market go from here with VHS? Does it keep increasing like paintings? Uh, I Maybe because I think about vinyls. I, I mean, uh, an unopened vinyl record is worth money. People will yeah. pay good money for that. Um, actually, this is a question for you. I don't know if you guys talked about this in terms of Pete Davidson. You know, there was that rumor, I don't know if it's true or not, that he's dating Madeline Klein from Outer Banks and they went to Vegas. Mm -hmm. If this relationship is true, why have we not gotten one picture of them yet? Can you... There was. No, there was. You, there was. There uh, was? There was. There was a shot of them. They were like getting off of private jet. Together. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. For some reason, I don't know if TMZ didn't run that as a first story or not, but I've been, I was like, you know what? We would have gotten a picture. I'm just shocked. I did not hear about that. Cause I figured that would have been a bigger deal. Cause unless, I knew about the actual. I'm thinking about a different sled, but no, I'm pretty sure that there was literally one shot of them after a show of his and they were getting on or off of a private jet. Um, huh. let's see. Pete Davidson. Well, what's her name again? Madeline, uh, right? Madeline Klein. She's on Outer Banks, folks. On uh, I believe. Netflix. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. It was them Great. out of out, out of private jet. Wow. But okay, so I'll have to it. check that out. Yep. And he's hosting SNL this week as the season opener. So I'm really curious. Uh, I wonder if he's going to talk about his VHS collection on there. <laughs> that's it. a lot of people are going to be tuning in to watch that. I think that was a big because it got delayed for months and months and months because of the writer strike. I think there's going to be a lot of people tuning in to see how he does being back on SNL. It's going to be a, a big show for them. Yeah. And then bad bunnies the next week is musical guest and host. And I wonder if Kendall Jenner will come in for that. And I wonder if they'll be there in the audience for Pete's just to see how the lay of the land for uh, SNL. And I'm just always curious of that Kardashian clan coming into contact with Pete Davidson's buds. Right. I, I think they all love him at the end of the day, him and Kim, I feel like left on very positive terms. Like this is not the right timing for us. But I think that they would all embrace Pete because Kim is still very positive about him. Yeah, no, we had a great photo at the Met Gala of them all talking and it seemed like they were all good. Um, where are we on number four? Number four, Britney Spears. Uh, apparently her new memoir, The Woman in Me, she is actually going to be doing the voice, like uh, narrating the thing, which I... Is it AI? Is it AI or is it actual Britney? <laughs> apparently it's going to be her, but then... She's going to do uh, parts of the book, and then there's going to be a mystery celebrity who we don't know voicing other parts or reading other parts of the book, parts about her family that are too painful for her to have to talk about. Someone else will step in. There were rumors that it was going to be Reese Witherspoon, hearing that that is not accurate. Um, so we don't know at this moment. But I said, if Brittany does this book, I will listen to it because that makes me so much more interested to hear it out of Britney's voice than anyone else's voice. Because you know, I don't I, have time I to read it. I'm in complete agreement with you. Like I listen to a lot of audiobooks, and I always want the author to read their book. But when it's Britney Spears on top of that, because mm -hmm. I just want to make sure Britney is associated with this book. Like I know there's a ghostwriter, but I want to make sure this is her wishings. This is what she wants out there. And to hear her own voice on it, that's not artificial intelligent, Britney. I want that to be Britney Spears. I want to know that she is deeply involved in this book. And also, I'm just curious is who the surprise guest? I mean, are we doing like Sam Ashkari reads a chapter? Or are we yeah. doing like people from I, her life in the past? I'm just trying to think like who would do this? Like who would be the person? I mean, what do you like Jamie Lynn Spears? You know, oh, like God, everybody, <laughs> everybody <laughs> no, that's ever rised up against Britney. I think. I mean, she could probably really get anyone to do this at this point. Like, there's so much love for Britney and like people that 
want her to do well that I could see even like Oprah being like, sure, I'll read parts of it for you. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, or, you know, like what, or what about like Taylor Swift? I mean, like somebody like that's like, listen, you are a pop icon. Mm-hmm. You know, we know Taylor loves to like, you know, at the MTV Awards with NSYNC and being so excited about that. I mean, it would be interesting. It really could go a number of ways. I mean, it could be Will Ferrell for all we know. <laughs> Can you imagine? I can't I, imagine, to, actually. He, he wouldn't be able to take that thing serious. <laughs> um, but anyway, so she's obviously got the memoir coming out. We found out about the, her voicing the audiobook. Uh, and then there's photos of her hanging out with Jay Balvin and Maluma. And they were at a, at a sushi place in Zero Bond, New York. Yeah. At Zero Bond, which is a huge, it's really popular right now. Super exclusive to get in. Apparently, uh, Jay Balvin and Maluma were there and kind of waved Brittany and some of her friends over to join them at their table. We've never seen them hanging out before. Uh, this could just be, oh, celebrities, let's all hang out together. I don't know if it was just for a simple photo. But it is interesting to see them hang out, right? It is. I actually, it's, 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 it's interesting. And it kind of like, there's like multiple feelings going on. I'm like, okay, good. She's with other celebrities. That's good. You know, like, mm-hmm. uh, are they taking care of her? Is that like, you know, you just start wondering like, okay, she's good enough to go out and have dinner. She looks like she's having fun. She's not dancing with the knives. Uh, everybody looks like they're having a good time in the photo. Um, and I want that Brittany where she can be out with other luminary celebrities, uh, in in music and and have her be celebrated in that way. I just I hope that's a good thing all around. Yeah, I, I agree. I think when you start seeing celebs, you're like, oh, okay. Then she's not being surrounded by people who are just trying to take advantage of her. And again, maybe there is a slight bit of let's put up a photo and this is going to get a bunch of likes on social media. So there is that. But I I do feel more comfortable, and I don't know why, but it just seems like. If she's around celebrities and these people, then maybe she's in a better mindset. But yes, that's yeah, not the case. <laughs> I love, but I love also how conspiratorial we are about everything nowadays. Yep. And I would love the breakdown and percentages of things that we do in pop culture that are actually real and things that we do for PR. And it can be a mixture of both, I'm sure. But I want to believe still in my little, you know, naive mind that they're out there having a blast. And this was a photo that just really meant something because they were having the best night ever and not, we need to release this because the book's coming out next week. Maluma, you have this coming out and Jay Balvin, we got to get you in there. I want things to be real. I mean, I've been thinking about this so much because of Taylor and Travis Kelsey. Mm -hmm. I I need to think, I mean, I, I want to believe that these people still have something so sacred in them that they're not just going to put this out there and put their heart out there to sell tickets for the NFL. Like I want to believe in reality of these situations. Yeah, no, you fell for it. (laughs) (laughs) You just got raw dog. Yeah. Yeah. Oh Oh, man. man. When am I going to learn? Number three. Well, Speaking of Taylor Swift that you just brought brought up, we got to actually talk about her. Um, Yesterday was the big premiere of her new Eras Tour movie where they invited 2,200 of her fans. They shut down the Grove, basically lined her fans up along the inside of it. Uh, She walked through. She was taking pictures with people, having a good time, actually spoke uh, before the movie started, said this Eras Tour was honestly just the most fun she had ever had. A bunch of celebrities showed up as well. Beyonce, Flava Flav, Adam Sandler, Maren Morris, uh, you know, Julia Gardner. A lot of people were there. Um, but she actually said something. You know, what I liked about Beyonce showing up is there has been so much comparison to Beyonce and their tours at the same time. And for some reason, Taylor really got more attention for some reason than Beyonce when Beyonce had one of the most successful tours of all time as well, where she's raking in a billion dollars as well. And, and then also Beyonce is going to be putting out a film of her tour. And so people are just, and because it's coming out after Taylor, a lot of people saying, Oh, Beyonce is just copying Taylor. Well, Beyonce showed up to support her. And I love that, that it's like, no, 
you guys are making beef where there is absolutely no beef. Taylor posted on social and said, I'm so glad. I'll never know what my life would have been like without Beyonce's influence, the way she taught me and every artist out there to break rules and defy industry norms, her generosity of spirit, her resilience and versatility. She's been the guiding light through my career. And the fact that she showed up tonight was an actual fairy tale. And I think that that's really cool to have your own idols standing there supporting you at something that is a big deal for you. I say that about Beyonce every day on my podcast. I, she doesn't even <laughs> podcast. I'm like, she inspires me to keep going. No, I mean, listen, you're right. But this, to me, it's like Barbenheimer in a way. Is mm-hmm. that two things? Like, you know, listen, they don't re- get released on the same day. Beyonce's movie comes out, I believe, December 1st or 3rd or something. Uh, but they can only help each other by supporting each other. I think this is also genuine support and not just push for the movies. But how amazing, like we always want to pit women against each other and two of the most successful women of all time in terms of pop culture at this moment in time, Mm -hmm. man, the way that they could even potentially come in and help failing movie theaters, like make movies an event again. It's not just Marvel. If we're going to open it up to concerts, let's do it. And they're doing it at such a level. And just like Beyonce wasn't hopping on Taylor's idea because Beyonce had film cameras there from day one on that Renaissance tour, as well as Taylor. These ideas, you know, like these people are just at a, platform that is so large and to be able to find ways to reach into other media forms to push their products and you know with Beyonce I don't even think of it as a product because I truly think she's gotten to a place of just art um, that I find it just so exciting for the consumer being my like I went I I got the first night I got tickets to the Beyonce uh, in IMAX because I was that excited about it and I love Taylor as well I haven't gotten tickets yet but like this is just nothing but excitement and I love when they support each other because it's the more the merrier at that level it can be really lonely at the top and it can be shared you do not it's not you against the world it's nice to think that they are both in rarefied air it's like i mean they show up at a town they help the local economy they pumped more money into towns than the olympics did for certain years yeah and you know what i love also is like they really are like you said revitalizing the movie industry because i'm like there's theaters around me shutting down left and right and then You know, she puts out a movie. Well, both of them, they're going to make incredible amounts of money. But, you know, the the tickets were insane. She made $26 million in advanced ticket sales. By the end of this weekend, it's supposed to be like $115 million in sales. That is a successful, successful movie. Not only that, there's not a lot of, I would say, production involved. I mean, she filmed this a couple, like when she was here in at SoFi, performing so it's like you've already putting on a performance you're really just filming backstage you're filming the performance itself so for them to already have generated 115 million dollars on this movie is unbelievable everything beyonce and taylor i touch just turns to gold these women have just literally the midas touch it's amazing right now And it's so amazing in terms of just looking at it from a business standpoint is that what movie studios are so pissed off is uh, at is that they cut out the middleman. They Mm -hmm. distributed their own movie. They made a direct partnership with AMC, which I think this is brilliant on both of their ends. So AMC pays Beyonce and Taylor directly. They don't distribute through 20th Century Fox or Warner Brothers. And then Warner Brothers takes their 30 percent cut. You know, like this is directly to AMC and it opens up movie theaters in a huge way. And that's why I think a lot of distributors and studios are very scared right now of this kind of thing happening because that's what my dream has always been to show like iconic housewives episodes at an amc like we can do this like find ways <laughs> to make movie going an essential experience that you are you are able to share with a, a communal experience with like some of the biggest fans out there that's what movie going yep. should be yep 100 uh number two Number two, a lot of people, you know, obviously with this war going on in the Middle East right now between Israel and Hamas, uh, a lot of celebrities speaking up, lending their support. There was additional pressure, though, put on Gigi Hadid. Gigi Hadid, who has uh, Palestinian descent, uh, a lot of people were like, what are you going to say? You got to say something. You cannot keep quiet this whole time. Um, She ended up putting up a statement, and I have to say her statement was beautiful. I think that she did such a good job of 
towing this line where she has a lot of pressure from both sides and you know you you don't want to alienate your your palestinian friends you don't want to alienate your jewish friends and me being jewish i read through it ready to pounce and i felt like i got done reading and i said you know what that was a really well crafted statement so i'm going to read the statement right here it says my thoughts are with all those affected by this unjustifiable tragedy and every day that innocent lives are taken by the conflict too many of which are children I have deep empathy and heartbreak for the Palestinian struggle and life under occupation. It's a responsibility I hold daily. I also feel a responsibility to my Jewish friends to make it clear, as I have before, while I have hopes and dreams for Palestinians, none of them include the harm of a Jewish person. The terrorizing of innocent people is not in alignment with and does not do any good for the free Palestine movement. The idea that it does has fueled a painful decades long cycle of back and forth uh, retaliation with no innocent, uh, with no innocent civilian Palestinian orders really deserves to be a casualty of and helps uh, perpetuate the false idea of being pro Palestine equals anti-Semitic. If you are hurting, as I share my condolences today with my love loved ones, both Palestinian Jewish, I'm sending you my love and strength, whoever, and wherever you are, wherever, where are, sorry, there's a lot of reading here. There are a lot of complex personal and valid feelings, but every human deserves basic rights, treatments, and security, no matter their nationality, religion, ethnicity, or where they were born. I know my words will never be enough to heal the deep wounds of so many, but I pray for the safety of innocent lives always. I thought it was beautiful. I mean, really for, um, you know, nobody actually is, it's a really, I mean, th- th- this is so tough uh, in so many levels and you're never going to be able to give the gravity of a loss of a human life in talking about it sometimes because you're mm-hmm. always going to leave out some aspect of it. Or, you know, even when I've talked about it on the show this week, you know, I've had people just like, well, what about this? Or you're ignoring the history of this. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait I'm actually talking about the human lives that were lost. So I thought this was really adeptly written for a an attitude that a lot of people have with celebrities of damned. If you do damned, if you don't, we don't want to hear what Drake's got to say. We don't want to hear that. Or that's so idiotic. And how dare you? And, and you know, today's society, it's not just that we go, okay, I don't agree with that, but I respect your feelings. It's, I res- uh, you know, uh, I don't agree with that. And F you, you effing idiot, you moron. And that's what I see a lot in this discourse on social media. So I was expecting um, to read a statement that everybody would have pounced on and this was not that and i was um i hate to even say impressed because who the who the hell am i and you know that still is we're talking about innocent lives i i shouldn't even care what Gigi hadid how it makes her look but i think for complex emotions that she's probably truly dealing with it's the best way that she could have put that in a post yeah i think the sentence that says it all is the terrorizing of innocent people is not in alignment and does not do any good for the free palestine movement and i i have been preaching this all week the people are i feel that there are so many people confused not educated on the situation to understand the gravity of this whole thing and how really this needs to be free palestine from hamas that's what it needs to be it this has you know this is these are two very different topics in that are going on over there and killing jews does not get you the land that you need it does not you know it it doesn't solve the problem that palestinians are being dealt with they are being ran by a horrific group of people in are in gaza that need to be out of power. At the end of the day, Palestinians will never be free with Hamas leading their their area. So um, honestly, I just, I wanted to give Gigi that moment of putting out such a beautiful statement in the midst of such chaos and hurt and pain and all of that. Yeah, I mean, it really did reframe things in a really, um, a really powerful way, which I'm shocked to say anything about the Hadids in that way, but it really did. And I was, I was, uh, I was like, okay, that's, that's a really, that's really, I read it a couple of times. I just thought, okay, that's, that's really uh, well put. Yeah. And I hope it encourages people to go and educate themselves 
on the full story of what's really happening over there. If you have questions, shit, hit me up. You know what I'm saying? Like, ask people, ask your friends, talk to people. Don't just go along with, you know, whatever you're you're hearing. Big movements. You know, I I think you need to investigate yourself because there's been some very powerful organizations that I feel like are. Uh, doing a disservice to America uh, out there. And so um, educate and don't yourself. Don't just call somebody an me. effing idiot. When you ask, yeah. when you get somebody's opinion, don't just say you're an effing idiot, F that. You know, like th- that's not listening. That's not that's not any form of listening of just completely like just calling somebody then an idiot. How, you know, like you're a brain dead, you're a moron, all of these things. That doesn't move the needle on anything. That does not help us move forward in any sort of way. It's just more division, more derision, more hatred. It's just they want us to hate so badly. They need us to hate and we just keep hating. And there is no path forward when we are all just hating like this. 100%. Um. Yeah. Wow, I guess yeah. Well, let's let's end it with something fun. Uh, what's number one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> number one. This was definitely the biggest shocker of the week. But Jada Pinkett Smith says her and Will Smith have not been together since 2016. They've actually been living separately, not divorced, just not together. And collectively, the world's jaw dropped open because we're all going, "Wait, what?" What do you mean you haven't been together for seven years? Like, that doesn't even make sense. He got up and slapped Chris Rock across the face for, you know, saying a joke. And he said, keeps my wife's name out of your mouth. So what do you mean you guys haven't been together? Well, she is talking all about this. She's got a new book coming out. Um, and she sat down with Hoda Kotb, talked about it, and revealed this whole thing. Um, by the way, her, her memoir is titled Worthy. Um, it should be called GI Jane (laughs) too, but I don't know, dude, like I did not expect this. I thought there'd be a lot of other revelations Uh. in there, but not the, people knew that they had an open relationship or whatever, that they would date other people, but why parade around for seven years, like a married couple show up to events, walk red carpets, go to the Oscars, do these things and make the world think you're together if you're out there just dating other people and doing other things. And her thing was like, oh, you know, I told myself I'm, I'm, you know, I got into this marriage saying I'll never get a divorce. And then so I'm sticking to that. Well, why? If you're not together yeah, and you want to don't. date other people, just get a goddamn divorce and move on. <laughs> uh, listen, I don't want to take away from her personal pain and I don't know her personally, but she is exhausting. She is exhausting. <laughs> This was so, I remember waking up early yesterday and and this was the first thing I saw. And I was just flooding back to memories of not only the Chris Rock slap, but everything, all of the red table talks coming, having Will Smith come on and crying the August Alcina relationship where, you know, they had this relationship, you know, that Will knew about that he wrote us, you know, all of these pop culture storylines. In fact, I was going to ask you if you had wind of this much earlier because seven years living separately You know, there'd always been these rumors, of course, for so long, but this is just taking it to that next level. And then also she says in the book that Chris Rock asked her out Mm -hmm. before the slap and said, oh, I thought you and Will were done. He's like, well, that's not true. And then he apologized. There were stories that they were getting a divorce, like that were public. And during the time that those stories were going out, Chris was like, oh, I guess they're done. Asked her out. And she was like, wait no, those stories are not true. And he goes, oh, I'm so sorry. So there's been tension between them as it was, I think, between Will and Chris Rock, just because like, dude, the dust hasn't even settled and you're thinking we're going to divorce and you're jumping in already? Like, back off, bro. <laughs> well, like, but that, I mean, not even, like, I'm like, Chris, really? You're just jumping in, just asking people cold like that? Like asking people <laughs> out cold that have been in long-term relate? That part of it shocked me as well, but I will say it just is so bizarre on top of bizarre. We always talk about these families, especially in Calabasas. It's always the Kardashians versus the Smiths. And now it adds this whole new wrinkle of, you know, just thinking about Will Smith's state of mind and what this is, you know, I know he's an active participant, but what this man has been put through because this woman just will not get a divorce because she thinks she's doing something noble in staying with Will. I made a promise. 
let him go. Let this man go. He barely seems to be hanging on mentally because he is so like that moment with Will Smith, the Oscars, that will stand the test of time for somebody that's Mm -hmm. an an insanely good, talented actor. And you just imagine that that night he's just sitting there thinking about when Jada's name comes out of his mouth, wanting to impress this lady that he's separated from. You can only imagine what this man has gone through on top of Jada also revealing in the book about uh, her ayahuasca journeys with her family. She seems like a very, really big feeling person that does not seem to, that seems to be depressed a lot and trying to figure out her place in life. I just feel like the Will Smith of it all, maybe that's one of the things that's not helping. Maybe it's time to let this go because that revelation to me was truly shocking, even though we're like, well, it makes sense. It's shocking. I, I feel like a lot of times she's embarrassing him. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of the stories over that, the last yeah. over the last five years, it's that's not normally a good thing. You know, it's like, oh yeah, I'm banging someone else, but it's all good. You know, or you know, I, I, I'm doing things that are revealing things that maybe Will would be embarrassed about. And yeah, be done. I think you guys need to be done. There, don't parade it around. No one needs you guys to be together. Separate and be free. Go date other people. Do other things. This cannot be healthy for you two. And I really wish you guys to be healthy and happy and dating whoever you want. You, you, you don't need to be keeping this, this relationship going for your public persona or whatever you're doing. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Let let that Will Smith bird fly free and let's check back in and see where we are a year from now. You know, I think it's going to be good things. 100%. Well, thank you, Ryan. Uh, that concludes our top 10 list for the Raw Rundown this week. Please, guys, if you have a moment, go check out Ryan's podcast, So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey. Do you want to give him a brief little rundown of what uh, your podcast is like? Yeah, man, it's like a lot of pop culture and reality shows. Like, uh, you know, Friday today, you just listen to this. If you love Real Housewives of Salt Lake, we do a line-by-line recap. I'll talk about the Orange County reunion. We do a pop culture roundup on Mondays with a lot of other entertainment news stories. I get to have great guests. I've had you guys, Hollywood Raw, on before. I I get to talk to just, I mean, I'm just a pop culture geek. I love music, TV, film, reality shows. And it's just a mashup of all of these things, plus a healthy dose of like my weird personal life. And we do tons of episodes so just come and go as you please see what you like and see what you don't like and i i can guarantee you you're going to find other podcasters other people that you will want to read their book listen to their podcast support them and so if i can be an aggregator in that way to point you in the right direction of what you should be listening to i love that 100 percent, and i highly suggest checking him out he's awesome he's fun um, and a buddy of mine, and thank you again, buddy, for, for joining in and jumping in today. I, I love having you on. I think you have really fun perspectives. You're a good person to talk to, a good person in this industry. So I appreciate our friendship. Hey man, you are one. Like, listen, this guy was at TMZ. I like grew up. Like, I, the, the, the stories this man has. Like, I can't wait to have him back on next time so I can <laughs> dig in deeper because we've only scratched the surface of what this man's knowledge is and what he's been a part of. I mean, it's truly, you know, he's popping up on documentaries now. Like, it's like the world is our oyster, like the Kim and Kanye divorce stuff. I mean, this is truly amazing. So, congrats to all you and your success. And I can't wait to replace your co host one day uh, formally. <laughs> And uh, we're <laughs> I'm going to stalk you. Uh, I know. So anyway, thank you guys so much. Uh, make sure you uh, check us out on social media. You know, Hollywood Raw, we're on Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, everywhere, YouTube. We have this video posted up on YouTube. And then uh, make sure you follow our private Facebook group called Off the Record, where we answer your guys' questions directly. Um, you will have to ask for permission to enter because it is a private Facebook group. But, uh, you know, you just got to answer a couple questions. We'll let you in. Uh, make sure to leave us a review. Head over, over to Apple Podcasts. Scroll down to our, our – go to our, our page. Scroll down to the bottom. Leave us a five-star review. Tell us what you're liking about the show or what you want to know more about, and we'll read that live on air at the top of the show. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you, Ryan. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Guys, hope you liked that video. We got a lot more where that came from. Hit that bell, like, subscribe, share with a friend. The best thing to support us is really doing that. And uh, we really need the money because we need hair gel. (laughs) 